morning boys and girls. I'm just sitting here not doing any of the things that I would normally be doing before school on a Thursday morning. In fact, I'm doing the opposite of what I would normally be doing. I would be dashing around the kitchen, trying to find lost things the children need for school. I might be answering messages and generally being in a tiz. But here I am doing the opposite of what I would normally do because I have been brought to a complete standstill by my blindfold. Oh, that's better. Today's story is about someone who was brought to a complete standstill. It's about a man called Saul, who was heading in a very bad direction in his life. And he was brought to a complete stop and then turned around to go in an opposite direction because he met Jesus. Now I'm going to tell you the story of Saul. Here's a lovely picture of him. You can see him. Of all the people who kept the rules, Saul was best. I'm good at being good, he'd tell you. He was very proud and very good, but he wasn't very nice. Saul hated anyone who loved Jesus. He travelled round looking for them. He wanted to catch them and put them in prison. He wanted everyone to forget all about Jesus. He didn't believe Jesus was the rescuer and he didn't believe Jesus was alive either. You see, Saul had never met Jesus. So one day, Jesus met Saul. Saul, there he is again was on his way to Damascus when suddenly a dazzling light flashed like lightning. It was brighter than the sun. It was too bright. Saul shielded his eyes and fell to the ground. He heard a loud voice. It was too loud. It gave Saul a headache. Saul, Saul, said the loud voice. Why are you fighting me? Lord, Saul answered. Who are you? I am Jesus, said the voice. When you hurt my friends, you're hurting me too. Saul's whole body trembled. Go to the city, Jesus said. I'll tell you what to do. When Saul opened his eyes, there you can see him being led, Saul in the stripy coat, he couldn't see. His helpers had to hold his hand and lead him like a little child. Saul was blind, like me this morning, but for three whole days, and yet it was as if he was seeing for the very first time. Meanwhile, there was a man called Ananias who loved Jesus. Jesus came to him in a dream. Go to Saul and pray for him and I will make him see again. Ananias knew all about Saul and how he hated Jesus's followers. Lord, he has come to hurt us. But Jesus told Ananias, Saul is the one I've chosen to tell the whole world who I am. So Ananias went to Saul, brother Saul, Ananias said, it was Jesus you met on the road. And Ananias prayed for Saul. Suddenly, Saul could see again, but he saw everything differently. He wasn't mean anymore. He even changed his name from Saul to Paul, which means small and humble, the very opposite of proud. And do you know what Ananias's name means? The Lord is full of grace. Grace is just another word for gift, which is funny because that's what Paul's message was all about from then on. It's not about keeping rules, Paul told people. You don't have to be good at being good for God to love you. You just have to believe what Jesus has done and follow him. Because it's not about trying, it's about trusting. It's not about rules, it's about grace, God's free gift that cost him everything. What had happened to Paul? He met Jesus. Paul got a new job. He called himself a servant and traveled everywhere telling everyone about Jesus. He got shipwrecked three times and he even ended up in prison. God loves us, he wrote from prison. Nothing can ever, no, not ever, separate us from the never stopping, never giving up, 
unbreaking, always and forever love of God he showed us in Jesus. Now, boys and girls, isn't that an amazing story? God rescued his people by stopping Paul's attacks on the church and on the followers of Jesus. And he rescued Paul from his dark life of living without Jesus and hating others. God turned Paul into the opposite of what he had been. Paul was brought to a complete stop when he was made blind and Paul thought of all the bad things he had done and he was sorry. Then Paul became the opposite of hating Jesus. He became Jesus's number one fan and began to spend the rest of his life telling people about Jesus and what does the story call it? The never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love of God he showed us in Jesus. Boys and girls, God is so powerful that he can transform people into the opposite of what they were. Why did God bother with Paul, especially when Paul hated God so much? Because he loved Paul. And God loves not just every Christian and all you boys and girls that go to XTB, but God cares passionately for every single person and wants them to turn to him. If Paul had ever listened to Jesus's teaching, he would have gotten a glimpse of what God is like and how much he loves us. Uh, do you remember the story of the lost sheep and the lost coin? One sheep was lost and the shepherd cared so much for that one sheep that he left the 99 others in order to find it. Or the woman who lo loses one of her 10 coins and doesn't stop looking until she finds it. Neither of them say, I have enough anyway. I don't need that last sheep, that last coin. They both search desperately for the one missing. And boys and girls, God searches desperately for his missing children. That's how much he loves us. Paul had been missing and Jesus had the power not only to find him, but to transform him into the opposite of what he had been. Have you let God find you? Is he transforming you? Boys and girls, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you that you love us so much. You search for us even before we are thinking about you. Thank you that when we couldn't save ourselves by keeping rules, you loved us so much. You gave your son to die so we could be transformed. Help us to often come to a stop so we can remember how much you love us and listen to your directions. We ask this in the transforming power of Jesus' name. Amen.